always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question before listening on. In order to calculate the Coulomb force that's acting on each of the three charges, it's going to be helpful to give an arbitrary label to the three charges. For example, we can call the 6 microcoulomb charge A, the 1.5 microcoulomb charge B, and the negative 2 microcoulomb charge C. We'll then begin by calculating the Coulomb force acting on charge A. We should notice that there are two electric forces acting on this charge. Consider that charge B, being positively charged, would be repelling charge A, that is pushing it to the left. And we can label that force as FBA. That would represent the force that B is exerting on charge A. On the other hand, charge C, which is negative, would be attracting charge A. So it would be pulling charge A to the right. And we can label that force as being FCA. That is the force that charge C exerts on charge A. Notice that FCA is pointing to the right, and that's going to make it positive. Whereas FBA is pointing to the left and will therefore be negative. So the net force acting on charge A is going to be the positive FCA minus F. BA. Now those are both Coulomb's law forces, so what we need to do is substitute in the expression for the Coulomb force. Now we'll slow down and make sure we understand all the different numbers here. For FCA, we needed the distance from charge A all the way to charge C, and we'll see from the diagram that total distance would be the 2 centimeters plus the 3 centimeters, which of course is 5 centimeters, but just notice that we've converted it into meters by multiplying the 5 times 10 to the minus 2. Also notice that the charges were given in microcoulombs. So when we plug them in, we have to multiply those charges by 10 to the minus 6. The same ideas apply to FBA, although the distance is different in that case, right? We have the distance from A to B being only 3 centimeters, and therefore we've plugged that distance in here, again converting it into meters. And the charges were converted into coulombs. K is a constant, and its value is equal to 899 times 10 to the ninth. Sometimes you can just round that to 9 times 10 to the ninth and that will be acceptable. Now that we've understood all the numbers, where they're coming from, we can plug this whole expression into our calculator. And we can come up here with the result. When we simplify that, we get approximately negative 46.7 newtons as the answer. Now because it's negative, that means overall the force acting on charge A will be pointing to the left. So you could report that force in exactly that manner. So that's the force, the Coulomb force, that's acting on charge A. Let's proceed in calculating the force acting on charge B next. Now as with charge A, there will be two forces acting on charge B. The first force will come from the fact that charge C, being negatively charged, will attract the positive charge B, and that's going to pull it to the right. We can label that force as being FCB. That's the force that C is exerting on charge B. Charge A is positive, so it's going to repel charge B. That is, it will push it to the right. And we can label that force as FAB, the force that charge A is exerting on charge B. Both of those forces are aimed to the right, so they're both considered positive forces. So when we go to calculate the net force acting on charge B, we'll make sure that both of those forces were positive in the equation. Let's replace these Coulomb forces with their corresponding expression. Notice for FCB, we are using a distance of 2 centimeters, and then for FAB, we have used a distance of 3 centimeters, but we converted to meters just as before, and the charges were converted into coulombs. And when you compute that, you end up with a result of approximately 157 newtons. It comes out as a positive result, so that means the net force acting on charge B is overall to the right, so we can include that for the direction of the coulomb force acting on charge B. We can finally move on to the net force acting on charge C. So charge B being positive is going to attract charge C, so it's going to pull it to the left, and we can label that force as FBC, the force that B is exerting on charge C. Similarly, charge A is positive, so it too will pull charge C to the left, and we can label that FAC. You'll notice on the bottom we've already plugged in the numbers. Make sure you pause the video and understand where all the numbers are coming from. Watch your distances. So between B and C we have 2 centimeters, and then between A and C we have the 5 centimeters, again converting into meters and converting charges into coulombs. Also notice that because both of the forces acting on charge C are pointing to the left, they're going to be negative. So we've changed the positive signs to negatives and made that adjustment. And when you calculate this, you should get approximately negative 111 newtons. The negative sign indicates, of course, that the net force is acting on the left for charge C. So we could take off the negative and simply say to the left. 
And that completes the solution to this question. As always, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this. If you liked it, please subscribe so that way you can stay tuned for additional physics solutions as well as solutions from calculus and chemistry and other subjects. And you can also send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.